Hey guys, welcome to today's video. As you can see, I have the Massimo Universal 60 inch snowplow installed on my T-Boss here. There are a bunch of headaches that I had to jump through to get this on, and I'm gonna try my best to save you guys those same frustrations. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button, comment on the video, it really helps out a lot. I got a lot of cool stuff planned. So grab a drink, and the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do before we get started is take your instruction manual and throw it in the garbage. Let's do it. So before we uh, get too in depth with the uh, nuances and things, um, some of them, I just wanna let you guys know, some of them are strictly plow related. Uh, so like I said, it's a universal plow system. So uh, the things that I'm gonna talk about in one section of this video are gonna be strictly for the plow, no matter what vehicle you're installing it on, things to know. And then um, a couple of things about the installation specifically on the T-Boss 550. I don't know if it's the same on other models. Um, I, I've reached out to a few people and um, came up with some kind of general consensus that uh, some installs go smooth and some don't. Specifically, the install on the T-Boss 550 is not so straightforward. Um, so... Before we start all that stuff, I am gonna go ahead and show you guys that it does work. Um, it, it does rotate, it does, you know, the winch does pull it up and down. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and fire up the, uh, the ignition here. These are winch powered. You can see there's a big eye hook in the middle of the push tube, and that's what pulls, um, or that's what your winch hooks onto to lower or raise your plow. So going in on the winch raises the plow. Going out on the winch lowers the plow. Okay. Like I said, it does work. I'll go ahead and just kind of rotate it for you real quick. So it does rotate. Kind of, and we'll get to that. But yeah, so there you guys go. It does work. Um, we don't have any snow yet to, to plow with it, but it is on there, it is secure, and it does seem to operate okay at this point. There's just a lot of stuff you gotta deal with to get it to this point. So let's go ahead and jump into that. Okay, so first off, this is what I have left over after the install. I have the crappy instructions, of course, a big bag of U-bolts and hardware, this extra bag of bolts and hardware that goes to the Polaris specific mount, which is this. And I almost considered modifying uh, something mounting this to my T-Boss. Uh, the universal mount on the T-Boss 550 is not universal. I'm just telling you, you will have to do some modifications to either the mount, um, your, your vehicle, or do what I did. Um, I went ahead and just bought some some little things I'm, I'll show you to, to, to mount it. So um, this is what all I have left after the install. It does come with these three wrenches and those two big Allen keys. Um, they're, I mean, they're junk, but they, they, they do work. But I just, you know, if you have your own tools, use those. Um, but the instructions, first and foremost, are god-awful. They are trash. Okay, so... Don't even don't even waste all of your energy on this, you guys. What I want you to do is look at the diagram, okay? You're going to open it up on page 4 of the instructions. You're going to have this diagram, okay? That that's your instructions basically. Um all of the descriptions are trash. They don't tell you pretty much anything that you need to know. Um specifically, um this step is okay. This step here I'm going to go ahead and let's, let's go ahead and just talk about it now then while we're here. So this step here where you're mounting the swivel mechanism to the push tube. Okay. So your blade can change angles. You do not, it does not say this. Okay. You do not want to tighten these, um, at best barely snug them. Okay. I promise barely snug them. If not leave them loose, um, a little bit loose. Otherwise your swivel mechanism will not work. These have to be barely even tightened at all, okay? 
It doesn't tell you that. That's going to save yourself a bunch of headache. Barely. Just thread the nuts on and then get the whole thing together and then adjust accordingly. Okay. That's big tip number one. Um, another uh, kind of tip number two that kind of goes along with the next step is the there's a spring and a lever. Okay. That's what you pull in order to rotate the, the plow. Okay. Uh, make sure everything is perfectly lined up like to the T even perfectly lined up. This thing barely lines up. I think the, maybe the machining was off slightly or something. I, I don't know. Make sure everything lines up perfectly. And this bracket actually goes into the notches, those notches right there. Make sure everything is lined up perfectly. So we got keep these things loose. All right. I promise. Keep those super loose. You can tighten them at the very end if needed. Make sure it's perfectly lined up before you put your spring and lever on. Okay. The next thing I'm going to give you guys a little tip about, okay. On this next step where you put these, it doesn't tell you what to do. It just says, put these on. Okay. You, I don't know if they need to be tight, loose, leave them loose until the very end. Um, they seem to be kind of what the plow catches on to stop it from turning. So leave those loose for now as well. Um, the springs, the springs were actually pretty straightforward. I don't have too much, too many qualms about that. Um, you just got to play with how, uh, tense you want them, how, you know, sprung you want them. And I don't even know if mine's right. I, I just, I haven't had snow to plow yet, but, um, but that's it. Oh, and by the way, this is the end of your instructions. So good, good luck. Um, so let's go ahead and go over to the plow. So now that we're over at the plow system itself here. Um, I'm just going to kind of show you how I got mine set up for now. Again, I don't know if this is going to work the right angles of the dangles once we get snow, but it seemed okay for now. That's about how much thread I have on my bolts there. Um, it doesn't tell you this either, but there's two big bolts that go right here. Okay. One on either side. All right. These right here in the corner, those can't be tightened all the way either. Okay. Those just need to be snugged. Otherwise your plow has no give and it will not, it, it's just going to be too rigid. It won't have any give whatsoever if you hit something. Okay. Um, these are those little ones I told you about that the plow like kind of, um, I don't know, just kind of like rests on. I don't really even know what the point of those are. I've never had a plow, so I don't know, but there are, um, maybe you can see it better on this side. You can put them in two different holes. So I'm assuming that that's what kicks the, 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 the blade forward, like permanently, basically. Um, so that might be something to play with over time. Um, but I did end up tightening, tight, tightening these all the way. Once I got them in there where I thought it seemed okay. All right. So these six bolts are the ones that you leave loose. All right. I, I bet you, you guys, I spent an hour six different times trying to get the right amount of tension on these. Otherwise, otherwise it will not angle. Okay. Um, it seems like there's a very, very particular sweet spot. Again, this is just with mine. I don't know if they're all like this or if I just got a crappy one, I'm not sure, but those are the bolts that I'm talking about in the first step that you do not want to tighten. It doesn't tell you that do not tighten them, leave them loose. You can tighten them up as you can see after the fact. Okay. Otherwise when you need to use this, your blade will not turn. Those are the slots that need to be lined up perfectly where that goes in. Okay. And mine, mine are lined up as good as they can get. And you still, sometimes it doesn't want to go in by itself. You have to kind of force it a little bit. I think, uh, you know, a sixteenth or an eighth of an inch off in the machining of these cutouts, it, it can screw up the whole thing. And, and I think that that might be what I'm experiencing a little bit. <clears throat> so, yeah, so that's, uh, that's the big things for the plow itself. Okay. Like I said, any, this is a universal kit. So no matter what vehicle you're working on, just take my advice there. Do not 
Basically, don't tighten anything until it's on your vehicle. Then you can dial it in. The manual doesn't tell you that. I backed nuts and bolts off so many times trying to figure out what to do. So just take that, uh, take that advice there, you guys. All right. Now let's move on to kind of the more T-ball specific issues I ran into. All right. So now if you guys want to stop watching, if you just have this plow and on a T-boss, feel free to check out another video or whatever you'd like. If you're interested to talk about or hear about the actual install specific issues on the T-Boss 550, this is where you're going to want to pay close attention to. Okay, As you can see, I've got the plow off. Um, it just is held on by two pins right there. That's it. That's all that holds it on besides the winch cable. Um, I'm going to take you under the truck with me and I'm going to show you kind of what to expect. Okay. Let's, let's crawl under there. Okay, so we are under the vehicle. Um, you can see this ear, or this thing right here, and this right here. That is where the actual plow push tubes get pinned onto. Okay, that's what secures your plow to the truck besides, like I said, the winch. All right. You can see my U-bolts right here. Um, I thought they might be in the way. They're, they're actually not. I was going to flip them around and do it the other way, but... They're not in the way, so I, I, I kind of just left them. But if you want to go the other way, I, I guess you could to have the, you know, the the, the flat part of the U-bolt here, you, you could. But anyways, what you get is this big universal plate with all these, like, diagonal slots cut out, okay, for different mounting options. All right. So you get a bunch of different U-bolts. And for what I did... Um, it cannot go in between the A-arms, you guys. If the plate is too wide, you're either going to have to cut the plate down or mount it somewhere else. It will not go by the A-arms, so you have to put it back. Um, it's kind of hard to see, but it is behind my A-arms. This is the, the furthest back A-arm um, tube right here. So it's in between the A-arms and the huge skid plate, okay? That big skid plate, that's where mine is mounted, right between the A-arms and that huge skid plate. All right. The front mounts, I use two of the short rounded U-bolts, okay? That's what's mounting on the front, you guys. So keep that in mind. Two of the short round ones. It comes with two, it comes with squared ones and, and round ones, short and long. These are the short round ones. All right. Those went on uh, pretty, pretty easily, okay? I, for, I just realized I forgot to mention. This will not go on here unless you take off your factory skid plate, all right? I've heard of people drilling holes in their other factory skid plate to get this to bolt through like this. I didn't do that. I just took it off. This thing is a heavier-duty skid plate than that piece of plastic anyway. So I just took it off. Then you can put your U-bolts in. Um, again, short round ones up here in the front, okay? So you do have to remove... I guess you don't have to. I chose to remove the little factory plastic skid plate that went right here. All right. It's just a eight millimeter bolts, I believe. Um, the back though, the back is where the issues start. Okay. The front was easy. It doesn't tell you where to put it. It doesn't tell you to take off a skid plate, yada, yada, yada. It's a universal kit. I get that. But being from the same brand that sells the UTVs, you would think they would maybe possibly favor uh, their brand UTVs, but they don't they don't mention anything about this. So um, remove the skid plate, short front U-bolts that are rounded, and the back. Let, let me take you to the back, and I'll show you what I ended up having to do there. I had no other choice that I could figure out without drilling holes in my frame, which I did not want to do. Um, so let me let me pull back out here, and we'll go take a look at those. Okay, so this is the driver's side. All right, I got the wheels turned so you guys can get in there a little bit easier. You can see the plate, right? You can see the front U-bolts, boom, boom. The plate itself, you can see the uh, the, the frame, the, the piece of the frame that I put the, the front U-bolts over. And then I came into the back and there was nowhere for anything to go, all right? Everything, any sort of tubing or metal is in the way. All right, I was just going crazy trying to figure out a proper way to mount this. You got a big extra tab welded on right here, a bracket, you can't put anything there. Focus. No U-bolts, I guess you could have bought wider U-bolts. 
Um, I don't know, I did not I did not go that route. Um, and then there's a piece of angled right there. And then it, it just, if you guys have done this, you understand my frustration on this particular machine. There's nowhere to put the rear bolts for this, for this mount, okay? It, it just, it doesn't exist. You have to come up with something on your own. What I came up with is, I'm not a fabricator at all. Don't claim to be, never will be. Um, I just did what I thought made sense in my head for the cheapest fix, okay? Um, this requires using two of the short squared U-bolts. And you can basically just see what I did. I took a piece of uh, mending steel, okay? Like something that you could get at Tractor Supply, a big strip of heavy duty like mending steel. It is galvanized, so it should slow down the rust, um, just like the bolts. And I basically just took a couple of generic measurements, um, cut off a few things here and there, rounded down the edges so they weren't super sharp. And um, I drilled two holes for the U-bolts and I stuck one end through this little th uh, triangle gap right there and then the other end through the plate. So that that particular part of the U-bolt is not through the plate. It is, um, this is what's holding it on, okay? Um, I've yanked on it and yanked on it with the plow. It seems fine. It doesn't seem like it's flexing or, or going to break or anything. Again, I haven't plowed with it yet. Maybe, maybe I have to revisit it later. I'm not sure. But for now, this seems pretty solid, and it only cost me about $8. Um, it just sucks that you have to do it. Or you could drill through your frame, okay? If you wanted to drill through your frame, I probably wouldn't even use this bracket. I would, I would use the Polaris bracket. Um, I was kind of mocking it up, and you can drill two big bolt holes, and that thing will bolt right to your frame um, using the Polaris one. But uh, this universal one, you guys, on the T-Boss 550, this is what I ended up doing for a solution. And um, you guys can take this idea and run with it, modify it to your liking. Um, or if you have something better that's upgraded over this, let me know, and maybe I'll give that a try too. But... Um, you can't find anything on these, you guys. That That's the one thing. Uh, there's nothing out there on the internet for this stuff. That's why it's it's people are figuring it out on their own. I'm trying to help you guys along. And, and if you run into any of the problems I do, uh, hopefully, you know, you can watch my video and it helps you along. But um, that's what I did with the back. I'm starting to ramble on a little bit. Go to Tractor Supply or wherever, buy a big piece of mending steel or just a big uh, piece of flat stock so some sort of fairly heavy duty steel and make little um, make little bracket things right there and it seems to work fine that's what i ended up doing and it seems okay so far so that's it for that part you guys t-boss 550 specific stuff recap take off your factory little plastic skid plate short round u-bolts in the front short square ones in the back Provided you do this method with another piece of steel there to act as a bracket. I don't know what you'd call it. Bra bracket's what I'm calling it. And uh, and that's it. Let's. Um, I want to touch on the community of Massimo, which seems to be pretty good so far. So let's uh, let's talk about that for a second. All right, guys. So to end the video here, um, I just want to let you guys know that at first. I had a whole video of me putting this together from start to finish, assembly, the whole works. It ended up being a big fail. I thought I was just having a heck of a time putting it together. I thought it was just me. Um, I was really frustrated. And uh, you know that, that video idea kind of turned out to be a fail. Um, so I went ahead and reached out to the awesome uh, Massimo community on Facebook. I highly recommend joining some of the Massimo groups on there, you guys. They are very helpful there's a lot of owners and writers on there that are willing to lend a hand and some advice so what i did was i reached out to them um, anyone who owned this plow not just this vehicle but the plow itself and i got a lot of positive feedback um, well i should say positive to me because um, they agreed with me that it was difficult to put on um, the instructions are, are no good we touched on that enough um, so it kind of it brought me up a little bit, and I wanted to, to kind of do this quick recap type video just to show you, instead of me putting it together and fighting with it, um, hopefully you guys can just watch this and, and kind of know what to do going into it. Um, but yeah, a huge shout out to the Facebook group for, for kind of um, 
talking out my ideas and getting other people's input on how this thing's supposed to work and it's supposed to go on. Um, I, 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 to be honest, I probably wouldn't have bought this brand plow if I didn't buy it with the ATV. I bought it at the same time as I did the ATV or the UTV or whatever. So um, I probably would have went with a different brand, just to be totally honest. I'm still not sold on the fit and finish um, of this particular plow, but I'm going into this ignorant. I've never had a plow. So this will be my first one. Um, I'm assuming after one or two seasons, I'll have enough um, insight as to whether or not I want to upgrade or not. And you know, down the road, I can I can let you guys know what I think there. But for now, this thing's ready for the winter. I'll probably have to do some minor tweaks. But um, but that's it, you guys. I appreciate you watching. Go ahead and like the video, and we'll see you next time.